Hello. Today we will be building a Dilemma keyboard. This video follows the build guide, of which there will be a link in the description below. We will start by soldering the jumpers on each side. Next to the jumpers are some labels. They say solder jumpers on this side for the right or for the left. Here we are starting with the left plate and soldering the jumpers on the under side of the PCB, the bottom side. This is why the right label is visible, because we flipped the plate. Then we move to the other side, what will be the right side of the keyboard. Note here that we solder the jumpers under it. And this is why the left label is visible. Next on the list, we will install the reset buttons. Those go next to the big update label. We will install them on the same side as we just soldered the jumper pads. Start by adding a little bit of solder on one pad. Then, holding the reset button with some pliers, melt the pad and install the button. Finish by soldering the three other pads. Do this for the other side as well. Next, we will install the audio jacks. We install them on the top side of the PCB. We will start here with the right plate, which means the right label should be visible. Once installed, you can hold them with a pair of normally closed pliers. You can then solder the three legs of the audio jack. If you are not sure about on which side to position it, make sure to check the build guide, as there are a lot of pictures there with explanations. Once the right side is done, also install the audio jack on the left side. Since we are installing the audio jack on the top of the PCB, you, you can see that the left label is visible. Here is what the PCBs should now look like. We will now prepare the 3D printed assembly for the trackpad. Grab a screw insert and the 3D part with a version number on it. It should look like this. Install the screw insert in it with the small side inside the 3D part. Then gently push the insert into the 3D part with your soldering iron. Go two thirds of the way in and let gravity do the work. Then flip it and push it against a flat surface. Here is what it should look like. Now, do the same process with the four other screw inserts. Now that we are done with the screw inserts, we will install the first 3D part onto the PCB. Grab the right plate and the 3D part with the version number on it. Then screw it into the screw that is closest to the audio jack. Do not screw it in completely, we will adjust it later. With this done, let's switch to the trackpad. If you take a closer look at the trackpad holder, you can see that there is a small notch on one side. 
There is also a notch on the trackpad itself, on the plastic that is around it. You can simply slide in the trackpad, making sure that those two notches are aligned. Install the trackpad retainer with a screw. Make sure that the screw is tightened all the way in. Grab the ribbon cable. We are going to bend it, so you shall find a flat surface with a sharp angle, for example a ruler. The ribbon cable needs to be bent 90 degrees on both sides in a very specific way. Make sure that you pause the video now or that you take a look at the build guide. Grab the right plate and open the FPC connector on it. Slide the ribbon cable inside the hole and then in the FPC connector. Then close the connector. Make sure that the blue part of the ribbon cable is visible. Slide the other end of the cable into the trackpad PCB. Double check the orientation. The blue side should be pointing towards the middle of the trackpad PCB. We will now secure the trackpad assembly onto the PCB using some screws. Carefully rotate the assembly 180 degrees. Take care of not damaging the ribbon cable. Make sure that the assembly fits in the parts that we previously installed on the PCB. Install and tighten all the screws. For this build we are using Boba U4 62g silent switches. The dilemma is compatible with all MX style switches and shock low profile kill switches. Installation is pretty straightforward here. Just drop the switches in and solder the two pins. Do this for both sides of the keyboard. An optional step to add some style to your dilemma and protect it is to add a case to it. Those are 3D printed and open sourced on GitHub. In the three screw holes, there's a little bit of plastic residue. You should push the screws in 
to make sure to remove this plastic. Do this for all three holes on both cases. Carefully pushing the PCB into the case. One by one, install the nuts and then tighten the screws from the other side. The final step is installing the anti-slip pads. You can move the keyboard a little bit on a flat surface to check that it doesn't slip. Congratulations on building your dilemma. We hope you had fun in the build and that you like using the keyboard. We are always working on improving our keyboards, so here are some nice insights on upcoming projects. If you are interested in them, or if you want to help, make sure to join the Discord server. There will be a link in the description. Just like all the other Bastard Keyboards projects, the Dilemma is fully open sourced. You can find the KiCad schematics, 3D files and firmware on GitHub. Mm -hmm.